Before we get started talking about column chromatography, let's refer to some things that are already familiar to you, namely thin layer chromatography. For thin layer chromatography, some sort of adsorbent such as silica gel is coated on a stiff plate. The mixture of solutes that we want to separate will interact with this stationary phase. To begin a separation, we spot the sample at the origin on the bottom of the plate. Then the bottom edge of the plate is dipped into some sort of solvent or mobile phase. Then we allow capillary action to draw the solvent up to the, near the top of the plate. For ease of discussion, I'm showing only one sample solute. Most often, TLC is done for qualitative purposes. In order to make comparisons between samples, we often take the ratio of the distance that the solute travels compared to the distance that the solvent front travels. Forms of chromatographic separation depend on a dynamic distribution of solutes, the components in the sample mixture, between the stationary and mobile phases. We can represent this process as an equilibrium reaction. This is an ideal. Real systems do not necessarily reach equilibrium, but they move in the direction indicated by the equilibrium. There is an equilibrium constant that governs the activity of a specific solute in the stationary phase compared to its activity in the mobile phase. This equilibrium constant is called the partition coefficient. It's a function of the solute, the type of stationary phase, and the temperature. Next to the nature of the solute, temperature is the most important factor in gas chromatography. We'll discuss that more later. In liquid chromatography, the nature of the mobile phase, that is the mixture of solvents, its pH, and, and the presence of other additives are the most important factors that can control the equilibrium constant. In modern forms of high-performance liquid chromatography, the stationary phase is on tiny particles that are packed in steel columns, such as this. Imagine that this is a liquid chromatography column. We inject a sample mixture at one end of the column and use pressure to force the liquid or mobile phase to carry the sample through the column. Then we use some sort of a detector to watch for the arrival of solutes as they emerge from the column. For example, we might put a window at the end of the column and add a light source and photomultiplier tube to detect the elution of the solutes. So in this experiment, we're going to graph the absorbance of the solutes as they come through the column. As each one emerges separately, we see a peak drawn on our graph below. One can calibrate the height or the peak area for each solute and do quantitative analysis. The time at which the solute reaches the detector is known as the retention time for that solute. The retention time is the sum of the time that the solute spends in the mobile phase plus the time that it spends in the stationary phase. Some important conclusions can be drawn from the fact that all solutes spend the same amount of time in the mobile phase. That may not be intuitively obvious, so let's do a thought experiment. Think of a moving sidewalk, such as they have at airports. It's a conveyor belt where people can move on or off at any point. Some people get on and stay on and ride to the end of the belt. Others get off to read the monitor or buy a newspaper or perhaps uh, buy a cup of coffee. Consequently, they reach the end of the hallway later than others who spend little time off the belt. However, everybody spends the same amount of time on the moving sidewalk. The difference in the amount of time that it takes two people to reach the end of the quarter depends entirely on the amount of time they spend off the sidewalk. This is analogous to the time that a solute spends in the stationary phase. As you see here, the total time is different, but the amount of time that each solute spends riding is equal. So for column chromatography, we define this term retention time as the time between the point of injection and the emergence of a given solute. That retention time can be calculated directly from the parameters of our chromatogram. Merely the linear distance on the time axis between the point of injection and the peak of our solute. Each solute has its own retention time. Any peak that goes through the entire column without any delay in the stationary phase is called an unretained solute. Its elution time is special because it gives us the time that all solutes spend in the mobile phase. 
it helps us calculate then the time that each solute spends in the stationary phase. This is also known as the adjusted retention time for that solute. Both of these terms are something we get directly off of our graph. We succeed in separating solutes because the different solutes spend different amounts of time in the stationary phase. We call the ratio of the time that a solute spends in the stationary phase compared to the time it spends in the mobile phase the retention factor, and it can be calculated directly from our graph. Retention time can be expressed then as the time in the mobile phase plus k times t sub m. Now for another important idea. The retention factor is also related to the relative number of moles that of solute in the stationary phase compared to the mobile phase. That may not seem intuitive at first, but think about a party. Most people hang out where the food is. So imagine that everyone spends 75% of their time in the kitchen. If that is the case, and if everyone is in thermodynamic equilibrium, then you would expect to find 75% of the people in the kitchen at any given time. Now the moles of the solute in the stationary phase is just the average concentration of the solute in the stationary phase times the volume of the stationary phase. Likewise, the concentration of the mobile solute in the mobile phase times the volume of the mobile phase should give you the number of moles in the mobile phase. Notice we have that ratio of the concentrations of solute in the two phases. Remember that is the partition coefficient. So the retention factor is the same as the partition coefficient times this volume ratio. So we can re-express the retention time as a function of the equilibrium or partition coefficient. Now the expression contains this volume ratio. Column manufacturers often express the volume ratio or phase ratio for the particular column in terms of the void volume or the volume of the mobile phase compared to the volume of the stationary phase, the volume flow rate F of the mobile phase. It may have the units milliliters per minute. The product of F and the retention time gives you the volume required to elute a solute, also called the retention volume for the solute. If we multiply F times the time for the unretained solute peak, we get the volume for the mobile phase. This is sometimes called the void volume or dead volume for the column. By multiplying both sides of our equation for the retention time by the volume flow rate, we can get a retention volume for our solute. The relative retention of our column for a given solute compared to any other is known as the selectivity or selectivity factor for that column. We calculate it from the ratio of the equilibrium constants, which is also the ratio of the G adjusted retention times and the ratio of the retention factors. The term for the later solute always goes on top so that the selectivity factor is always greater than one.